we've been looking at this topic of statistics, right? And um, we've been looking at how to present data, um, we've been looking at how to collect it, and now we're going to start looking at analyzing a bit more. I, I sort of introduced this idea of outliers last lesson, and um, I guess simply put, outliers are values that lie outside most of the other values, right? Um, if you looked at this data set here, which one looks like an outlier to you? 180, okay, because it's much bigger than the rest of these, right? But we want a kind of strict definition to actually describe outliers because it's not enough to say, oh, at 180 looks really big or you know, 10 looks kind of small, maybe that one's an outlier. How do we actually know, right? We need a mathematical definition. And that's why I've introduced all of these different variables from before, okay? So outliers, we agree that they lie outside most of the values. So they're either going to be really small or really big. If they're less than Q1 minus 1.5 times the interquartile range, then we say that's an outlier. If it's less than Q1 minus 1.5 times the interquartile range. Similarly, I can have really big numbers that are outliers, can't I? And that's where I use Q3. That's Q3 plus 1.5 times the interquartile range. So when we're finding the interquartile ranges and when we're finding Q1 and Q3, it's not just for the sake of finding numbers. It's for this definition, so that I can help determine outliers. Is, is this number small enough to be an outlier, or is it big enough to be an outlier? Just for some food for thought, when I have outliers, how did they affect the mean again? How did they affect it? Increase or decrease. Yeah, okay, so it depends, depends on the type of um, outlier, but it can increase or decrease. Would it affect the median? Yeah. How? Right, remember, what does the median tell me? The median tells me what's in the, the, middle. the middle, the position, right? So it doesn't care about the values, so it doesn't actually affect the median. Okay, so allies don't affect the median. And similarly with mode, well, mode just, I want to know which one occurs the most often, so allies aren't really going to play a role in that either. So just some observations there. For example, if we look at um, Australian income, household income, right, for individuals. I think the average is about, sorry, yeah, I think the average is about, actually, after the stats here, the, me, oh, sorry, the median gross household income was 80,000, but the average was about 100,000, right? So you can see that the average is a bit more. Maybe it's affected by those people who earn, you know, millions of dollars each year. Uh, similarly with your exams, for example, um, this previous test, the average was 61%, the median was about 68%. Okay, so you can see that those averages, they're affected by people on either ends of that, whereas the median, we only care about the positioning. But that, that one's much closer than those household incomes. Let's come back to this example here. We've got uh, the number of flowers sold on certain days. And for this data set, we want to do the following. We want to find a five-number summary, the intercultural range, and then we want to identify any outliers, right? Uh, Mick, can you help me out again? What values do I actually need for my five-number summary? Uh, yep. Median mode? Yeah. Have a look back. Q1, I do need the median. Q1, Q3. So I need five numbers. What else am I missing? Min and max. Yeah. Good. OK. So let's go through that. So median again, I'm looking for the value that occurs in the middle. If I have this number of values, so I've got seven values here, right? I want the value that splits my data set into two equal groups. Once I select that value, then I can select those two equal groups there, right? So I've got my median as 30. Um, Freya, what's my Q1 going to be for this one? 10, right. So it's the median of that lower group. That's my Q1. That's just 10. Q3, can you help me out? Well, what's Q3 going to be here? Q3 is going to be... Is that the 60? Yeah. Why is there a comma? Yeah. Oh, yeah, why is there a comma there? Sorry. <laughs> Should move on there. All right, so that's 60. And then min and max e is really easy. That's just 10 and 180. Okay, so that's my five number summary. I just want those five values there. Interquartile range, I already talked about that definition, but the interquartile range, okay, is equal to Q3 minus Q1. So all you have to do is go back to your table. You can see once you've laid out the solutions like this, it's very easy to see. Well, that's just 60 minus 10, and that's just going to be 50. Now, here comes the important part. I want to identify, are there any outliers? And we suspected that 180 was an outlier here, okay? 
But remember, I want to use that strict mathematical definition. If, I'm wanna, if I want to check whether 180 is an outlier, which one of these definitions do I want to use, do you reckon? Do I want the less than one or the more than one? The more than one, right? So depending on the question, you will have to decide for yourself which, defin de which definition do I want to use. Sometimes you may have to check both. In this case, we'll probably only need to check one, but let's just check the less than anyway, just in case, right? So I want to see if there are any values less than Q1, which is 10, minus 1.5 times into a quartile range. So 1.5 times 50. That's not going to be a nice number. It's going to be a negative number, isn't it? It's going to be negative 65, I think. You do that. So that doesn't really make sense, right? You can't have negative flowers sold. So in this case, obviously, we're not going to have any values that are lower than that. We don't have to think about that. What about the more than one, though? Let's have a look. For more than, I want to do the same thing, but I want to use this formula now. I want to see Q3 plus 1.5 times this value. So my Q3 value was 60 plus 1.5 times 50. What's that going to be? Calculate that up for me. Anyone got it? 135. Okay. So if I have any values that are more than 135, that's when I classify them as an outlier. And very clearly here, you can see, oh, 180 is greater than that. So I'll just make a little statement there. Since 180 is greater than 135, therefore, it is an outlier. Okay? So it's really important when we're looking at this idea of outliers in mathematics. And we're not just saying, oh, it's a really big number or it's a really small number. We want to come back to these definitions to identify whether they are actually outliers or not. Can you copy that down for me?